Dr. Srikanth Munna from TX Hospitals. I'm a consultant urologist here. I did my MBBS from Guntur Medical College and uh, DNB General Surgery from Delhi St. Stephen's Hospital and MCH Urology from Usmania Hospital, Hyderabad. So today we are going to uh, discuss a questionnaire pattern basing on a simple topic which is urinary stones. What are the treatment modalities? Okay. Before that, I will enumerate the population at risk who are having this special type of stones. Okay. Generally, people lying in dry, arid climates, tropical countries like India, okay, and basing upon the climate also, like it is a summer season or it is a winter season. So, in a summer, patient lying in a dry areas, they will be having more chances of stone formation. And coming to the gender, male population, men are more prone for stone formation compared to female in the ratio of 2 is to 1. So some people ask me how common are these stones, they are common, how much 5 to 10 percentage of the Asian population is having stone in their lifetime. That means if 100 people are watching this video, 10 of you may have stone at this particular point or in the rest of your life period. So this is the incidence and this incidence is very low reported according to me because most of the stones are asymptomatic, patient does not seek attention to a medical uh, field without any symptoms, that is the problem. But with the, with the increasing trend of peripheral medication available for us, medical setups and ultrasound scans, x-ray machines available for us, even asymptomatic stones are being picked up when the test is being done for some other medication, some other condition. Okay. So the incidence of stones is exactly not known, but yes, prevalence is around 10% in Asian population. Coming to the other modifiable risk factors, see you cannot change your uh, climatic condition, you cannot change your occupation. You cannot change your age, but yes, there are few modifiable factors where you can change to prevent these stones like obesity. There is a condition called as metabolic syndrome. Patient may have hyper triglyceridemia, that is high levels of triglycerides, high levels of cholesterol, high levels of blood sugars, high BP, along with that visceral obesity, that is central obesity, a lot of fat in the abdomen and the pelvis. So these persons will be having high risk for stone formation. The increase in the risk is around 5 to 30 percentage. So if a normal, if both, if two persons are sitting side by side and working throughout their life in the same environment, a person with obesity will have 30 times more risk compared to a normal risk, normal patient who is lean. Okay. So these are modifiable. And second thing is high con uncontrolled sugars and hypertension. Hypertension is a very interesting thing because it can be caused by stones and stones itself can cause hypertension. So controlling your BP, controlling your sugars, keeping your cholesterol under check, these are all very important things. So let us come to the treatment modalities. Basing on the anatomy, the stone can be in the kidney, the stone can be in the urinary pipe, the ureter we call it as, and the stone can be in the urinary bladder or it can be in the urethra also where the urine from the bladder is expelled out through uh, urethra. Okay? So for kidney stones, up to 5 mm stones, the treatment is weightful watching nothing is to be done. Okay? For a 5 to 10 mm stones, yes, medical therapy can be successfully given in 50 to 80 percent of the population. There are few medications which can expulse, we call it as medical expulsion therapy. Your doctor gives you a special type of drug which is called as an alpha blocker which aids in the passage of stone easily. It causes dilatation of that ure ureter, the urine pipe, the kidney pipe, whatever we call it will be relaxed. So if a 5 to 10 mm stone is stuck in that ureter and patient is having pain, medical expulsion ther therapy can be tried using these medications and plenty of water and steroid can also be given but it has to be given only under the observation of your urologist because it is a double-edged sword. Steroid can cause some other problems in normal population and it can cause drastic uh, disaster in uh, diabetic patients. It can elevate your sugars to 400, 500. So a diabetic patient should not use steroid unless prescribed by your urologist. Okay. So a stone of size more than 10 millimeter, it can be dealt with several ways. If a stone is sitting in a kidney, basing upon its position, the most common gold standard till today recommended not only in India, worldwide is PCNL. It is called as percutaneous nephrolithotomy. So whatever the name is, it is generally a puncture made in a kidney from your back, a tract is made, a size of a pen and a rod lens with a camera is placed, stone is blasted using a lithotripsy or a laser and then the particles are removed out. 
temporarily you may have a pipe keep sitting there for a day or two for the kidney to drain or the bleeding to stop and you can be discharged on third day or fourth day according to your surgery. So this is PCNL. The same surgery can be tackled with the RIRS which is the latest technology in the field of urology. It is a flexible ureteroscope again, it is a rod with a lens but it is a flexible. So you can put through natural orifice like urethra, go through bladder, go to ureter, then approach the kidney from there and then blast the stone with laser and the same thing can be repeated from downwards. It has its own limitations, the stone size is a limitation, the, sit, the stone where it is sitting is a limitation and uh, as far as stone larger than 2 to 3 centimeters, it is not worthful, it takes around 2 to 3 hours for the stone to break and so it has its own limitation, still PCNL is gold standard. If a stone has come down and is sitting in the ureter, depending upon the area of the ureter, depending upon the caliber of the ureter, again URSL is one procedure, again it is the same technology where the rod lens is of more narrower in size and it is more lengthier than in a fluoroscope and this is done through natural orifice. Go through urethra, bladder and ureter, see the stone, blast it, remove the fragments, put a stent temporarily to, for the ureter to heal and come out. If a stone is sitting in the bladder, again it is the same system, go through natural orifice with a different type of scope and do the procedure, come out. So the other modalities of stones, when the stone size is larger for these endoscopic procedures, the other available modalities are laparoscopy, where you can, in this, a stone sitting in a ureter, if it is large in size for endoscopic procedure to complete in single sitting, a laparoscopic approach can be done, we call it as laparoscopic ureterolithotomy where a small incision is given on the ureter once you go inside the abdomen with an endoscope, you give an incision over the ureter, take out the stone and suture the ureter back over the stent, okay. And for renal stones also, if the stone is large, if it is protruding out through the pelvis where the, we call it as a corridor, you go again through laparoscopy, make a hole in the abdominal wall, put a scope, you cut the pelvis here, take out the stone intact and close the pelvis again. We call it as pylolithotum. And few stones are there which are called as staghorn stones which they occupy the complete posture of the kidney in a three dimensional way. The stone is sitting in the corridor, extending horns are present through all the calices where you cannot remove in single puncture, there you have to open the kidney and you have to take out the stone. Still this procedure can be attempted in PCNL, the only problem is it may require multiple settings. Like you may require two to three surgeries for the entire stone to be cleared. Okay. If not, if you want to be done it in a single sitting, a open procedure or a laparoscopic procedure can be done. Despite all these surgical measures, we have one non-surgical option which is ESWL, extracorporeal shockwave lithotripsy. So this is a limitation is around 1 to 1.5 centimeter stone sitting in a kidney or in an upper ureter. You can blast the stone with the shockwaves by a device which is placed outside the body. It will be like an ultrasound machine, you will, the patient will be lying, the stone is focused using the x-ray and the blast waves are sent and the stone is broken. For the stones, bro uh, the broken fragments to be expelled, a stent may be required temporarily depending upon the anatomic factors, again the lying of the pipe, the lying of the calyces I mentioned earlier. So these are the various treatment modalities we have and uh, let us meet in the next session in detail uh, in the awareness talks in the TX Hospitals YouTube group. So please uh, be with us, thank you.